Girl on the Third Floor is a 2019 horror film starring Phil CM Punk Brooks, Trias Kelly Dunn, and Sarah Brooks, and features the directorial debut of Travis Stevens, who also produced and co-wrote the film. The Girl on the Third Floor is about a guy named Don Cope who uh, tries to renovate a rundown house with a sketchy history for his growing family. How's the little kicker doing? Say hi to Only to learn that the house is other plans. You want my advice? Get your husband and your baby far away from that house. Cool little side note, the house they filmed this movie in is actually a haunted house. Travis Stevens bought the property for his production company and heard some stories around the neighborhood and it turns out that the house has some history to it and people think it's haunted. So they thought, why not shoot a haunted house movie in a haunted house? So this movie is interesting to say the least. The plot is a pretty simple haunted house type of story. The movie has like a sexy, seductive kind of vibe to it. It feels like a story that would be on like an episode or like a season of American Horror Story. The pacing could use a little work. I felt it was slow at times. In the beginning, when he's working on the house, it's like CM Punk's gonna clean a house and you're gonna watch. It's a lot of him cleaning the house. It could be a Home Depot or Lowe's commercial. Let's size up this, spruce up that, and let's not do any of this. Let's do this. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Eventually gets away from that, but there's times where you're just basically essentially watching him renovate a house. Certain movies feel like slow burns, and there's a payoff, there's a lot of tension in the scenes leading up to a scare or something. This movie didn't always pay it off and the tension didn't always feel like it was there, but it was definitely a creepy vibe, creepy feel to it. And once it gets to the third act and the movie is over, it, it raises a lot of questions and a conversation starts because of it. The characters in this movie tend to make really dumb decisions sometimes. There's moments in this movie, a haunted house has bad reputation, everybody knows there's something wrong with the house and there's something eerie, you're in there by yourself, you don't know what the hell's going on. As a viewer, you're like, no, 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 At that point, you just walk away and you go, well, I'm gonna chalk this up as a loss. You take your stuff and you get out. This is really nice. Get out. Too bad we can't stay, baby. You want to be able to relate to these characters and put yourself in that position and when they make the right decisions or the smart decisions. And of course, when you're in that situation, you're not always going to make the best decision. But watching a film, like a horror film like this or any kind of horror film, you don't want to watch it and take yourself out of it and get frustrated with the characters for making really dumb decisions. No matter what happens, we have to stay together. This isn't right, we should split up. Yeah, good idea. Really? It's a horror movie, so if they all did the smart things and the right things, I guess you wouldn't have a movie, but then again, that's not always the case. So the acting in this movie was pretty solid. Overall, everybody was pretty good. For this being his on-screen debut, Phil CM Punk Brooks did a pretty good job. He's on screen a lot. He has a lot of on-screen time and he does a pretty solid job. Trias Kelly Dunn is really good. Sarah Brooks is really good. They all did a good job of conveying what they wanted to do with the characters. So the way you were supposed to feel about the characters, you felt about the characters, which is good because that's what the story is trying to tell. Okay, cinematography. For the most part, it had those dark shots, that, you know, nice shadowing, nice lighting. There was this one scene in particular where the you'll see a camera attached to like a wire. That was one of the more tense moments of the movie and it was pretty creative. The score in this movie was pretty good. I thought it telegraphed its scares a little too much. It's almost like once you hear that music playing, you know something's gonna come and it kind of takes away from the surprise or the eerie factor because it should feel eerie, but it kind of doesn't. The sound effects are good with the practical effects. So all like the squishy gooeyness sort of stuff going on, all the, you know, gross stuff happening, that's all good. The only knock I have on the sound effects is one. It's only one, but it's a big one. What? Very early in the movie, I mean, the movie just started. They walk into this house, the house has hardwood floors, and Don's character walks in with his dog, Cooper. And Cooper walks in, and if anyone has a dog, you know what their paws sound like when they're walking on a hardwood floor or a tile floor. That did not sound like a dog walking around in a house. It was 
odd. I understand they re-record a lot of the things to make sure they you know, get the audio right. They don't take the audio from the scene. But this wasn't that sound. It wasn't even close. And to me, it stood out like a sore thumb. The movie just started and the dog is walking around the house and it sounds like a goddamn Clydesdale is walking on the streets in a Budweiser commercial. I don't know what the hell was going on. I was like, this is not, this is not a dog. This is not a dog walking around on the hardwood floor. Anyway, that's it. Other than that, thumbs up. This film used a lot of good practical effects. They didn't have a lot of money. It's a low budget movie, so they're not gonna have a lot of money for CGI and stuff like that. But regarding the practical effects, it was a lot of like body horror and you could tell they were influenced by Cronenberg. There's a lot of squishy and gooiness. There's stuff kind of coming out of holes in the walls. There's stuff coming out of electrical outlets in every little area of the house. Oh, that's not right. No. You have no idea what the hell this stuff is. I, I, I still to this day, I have no idea what's coming out. And the one thing I will say about this movie is you will not be looking at Marvels the same again. Marvels? That's all I'm going to say. You have no Marvels! But anyway, but the effects, all the practical effects, thumbs up. Very good. One of the best parts of this movie was the overall theme that it presents and it has something to say and that's probably the best quality to this movie. This film has a narrative about life being a series of choices and essentially the decisions that you make, good or bad, put you in the position that you're in. There's some outlying factors, yes, but ultimately it comes down to your choices, what you choose to do or not do. Afterwards, it really, it brings on a discussion. That they did a really good job of. I thought that the film could have been scarier at times. I thought they telegraphed their scares way too much with the music. A lot of the scares and a lot of the things that were scared, a lot of the imagery, a lot of these things you saw coming. They were either telegraphed by the score or the scenes leading up to it. There's a way to do it in a horror movie where you can really have this sense of impending doom, like on the edge of your seat, knowing something bad's gonna happen. You know the plot of this movie. The plot of this movie is that it's a haunted house. So you're going into it knowing that there's something wrong with this house. Yet when you're watching it, you don't really feel like you're not on the edge of your seat waiting for something. You're waiting for something to happen, but you're just not tense. You're sort of watching it. You're watching things unfold. So overall, is this a good movie? Yes. I personally, I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. Considering it's a directorial debut of Travis Stevens and it's the on-screen acting debut of Phil CM Punk Brooks and he's in a lead role, this was a very solid outing on their part. They did, a, I mean, there are two major roles. You're talking about directing and the lead character, essentially. And that's two big, big aspects of the film that people are doing for the first time. Is it scary, like like really scary? Not really. Is it creepy? Yes, I think that's what the, the, the feeling they are going for anyway is creepy. They're going for like a creepy haunted house vibe with a nice theme to go along with it. So overall, do I recommend watching this movie? If you're a fan of Cronenberg, watch this movie. If you like haunted house stories that don't have a lot of CGI, watch this movie. If you're looking to get really, really scared, like terrified, you're looking for a lot of jump scares, CGI ghosts, you might not be a fan of this movie. This movie takes its time and it builds and people nowadays might not have the patience for it. But if you like slow burns, then yeah, definitely check this movie out. Okay, that's my take on Girl on the Third Floor. What's your take on the movie? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Have you even seen it yet? Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this video and you like movies in general, especially horror movies, subscribe to the channel and get notifications on all my upcoming content. And I will see you in the next one.